All right, let's open or let's uh, draw a NAND gate and the icon for a NAND gate. Start by opening our previous library, doing a save as CMOS EDU9. Then let's do a control N for a new cell. Let's draw the schematic. Let's call this NAND underscore 2. We'll go in here and put our NMOS down, put a PMOS down, and it might be simpler just to copy from the inverter so we don't have to relabel everything from this uh, inverter here so we don't have to relabel the spice model or the sizes. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go do things from scratch. I'm going to press C for change just to show the uh, that I can make this a four port transistor or I can go back and just make it a regular transistor. Notice when I make it a four port, port transistor the body connection is closer to the bottom terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, well, we'll leave that on there for the moment. I'll go up here to edit and then mirror up down because this is the source of the PMOS and this is the drain and if I go here and change this device I can see that the body connections are close to the source <coughs> so let's change it back to transistor <coughs> excuse me and then this one will change back to transistor apply okay now let's set the spice models now if you recall I put in my uh, net lists here my spice models in C colon electric C5 spice models and they're called NMOS and PMOS quite original and so I'm gonna go tool spice set spice model control I NMOS apply I'm going to set the size now to 0 0.5. I move it down here. We'll go here. Set the spice model. <coughs> Do a control I. PMOS. Apply 0 0.5. OK. And, whoops, control Z. Use the control button until I highlight that text. Move it where we want. Fit. Move this down. And I'm going to do a control I or double click and set the width here to 10 and the length to 2. So in our setups, this would be a 300 nanometers lambda. So the actual length is 0 0.6 microns or 600 nanometers and a 3 micron width. So we'll do a control I, width of 10. Now notice the reason we use the, in the NAND gate we uh, uh, use the same size P and N because we put PMOS in parallel and NMOS in series so it gives us the same effective resistance. Again if you don't understand that look at the CMOS book. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adjust the positions of these two so that they're width over length and, and let's move this up let's move this one up and you can do it to the way that you like all right on the digital gate I'm not going to apply the uh, connectors or the po separate power and ground pins for the schematics just because it clutters up the schematics but now I'm ready to do select that do a control C click over here a control V and then fit and then select this one control C and then zoom out control V and now I'll drop in a power uh, node and a ground node zoom out a little bit and fit and before I start wiring things together I want to look and see does this look like a, is, you know, could I make the schematic a little tighter 
You know, is there anything I can do to make it a little nicer looking? Because nice schematics are, you know, even when you're troubleshooting, it's nice to see inputs on the left and outputs on the right. You can move this over, move this over, something like that. Turn the grid on if we wanted. I'm going to go ahead and make a mistake. So it looks like those are connected. So I'll go up here, left click to select that port, up, over, and down. Left click, right click, down. Left click, right click, over. And then left click, right click, up. Left click, right click, up. Now, I need to connect the gates here so I can go and do this several ways. If I move this one over a little and I move this one over a little, I could go down like this over here, connect that there, connect this out. I could go over here, pull this out and this down. This is one way of doing it. Um, I'm going to change and do it a different way, but before I do that, remember I didn't connect this ground node to this NMOS device, so I'm going to do an F5 or DRC. It says found three errors, so I'm going to hit the greater than sign. It says floating arc. Well, I know that is because I haven't defined my uh, input and output yet. Greater than sign, another floating arc, greater than sign, uh, unnecessary pin, so we can hit delete. Get rid of that. I can go do the off page nodes here and here and over here. Left click, right and drag. Left click, right and drag. Pull that down a little. Then let's export this node and call it. So notice I left clicked on the node. And then I've highlighted that port. Control E, we'll just call this A. Control E, we'll call that port B. And how about Control E, we'll call this A and B. And there's lots of things we could call it, but that's good enough. Alright, so I don't like the way this is drawn, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to delete this. Well, before I do that, let's do a DRC again. Four errors found. It didn't flag this one yet, but let's see what happens. So unnecessary pin, we can delete that. Um, arc dangles. Ooh, didn't I connect that? Apparently not. So let's do that again, and then right click over. Hit F5. One error, and it better be this one. Shift greater than, no nope, unnecessary pin. Hmm, did that automatically connect? Huh, that should have flagged as an error, but we'll find it when we simulate, but uh, not sure why that didn't flag as an error because it wasn't connected, but we'll connect it right now. Um, let's fix this, delete that. And come over here and go down like that and then do an F5 one error shift unnecessary pin yep do an F5 again alright so there's our NAND schematic so let's save save library and there's our NAND schematic now I'm ready to make an icon view for this schematic It might be useful just to show, even though we don't have any simulation information, just to generate a spice net list here. So let's generate or write a spice net list. Call it NAND underscore two. Let's go schematic. Save. Now I just want to look at the text from that. So I'm gonna. I could open it. It'll tell me there's no. Uh, definition for models and other things. So let's just look at this and say, all right, so I've got four transistors. I see the grounds. I see the body of the NMOS connected to ground. Net 10, which is the source of that MOSFET, connected to the drain of the other NMOS. 
see the two source and drains of the or source and bodies of the PMOS are connected to VDD. The outputs of the PMOS are connected to A and B. So everything looks good. We'll, uh, yeah, let's leave that schematic or that uh, net list there. Now let's make an icon for the NAND gate. So we'll go up here to uh, tool, whoops, to uh, view, make icon view. Now notice it created a group where I've got a schematic and an icon view. I can hit f uh, fill. Now I can edit the icon by clicking on this and then going, pushing down into that or control D. Or I can go over here and go directly into it. So if I go here, I can edit that schematic. If I go back over here, I can connect that and hit control D. And now I'm in the icon. I can edit the icon. Well, an AND gate doesn't look too good if it's a box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the box. Hit delete. And I'm going to make my uh, schematic match the schematic here, something similar to this. Now I don't want to use this for drawing my schematic. I want to draw my own because this symbol is a built-in symbol that has some uh, significance associated with it in, when you use logic simulators, which I'll discuss in a moment. But that'll tell us what our schematic needs to, our symbol needs to look like. So we'll go up here, artwork. Let's do the open polygon, drop it down. Let's move it over here, press Y to edit that mode, come over here, come up there, and then let's delete that one, and then Y again to get out of that mode, whoops, and we'll get rid of that, and then here we'll drop that polygon in again, drop it here, press Y, Go over here, I think that. Okay, and this one, go up here, delete, delete, press Y to get out of the mode. All right, so now just to make sure we got it matching up there, pretty close. Now let's go drop in a circle. Oops. And let's see. Seems to like it when I select it outside the circle anyway. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, since I looked at that and I can tell that this is just needs to be a semicircle, I'm going to select it, hit Control I, degrees of circle 180. Now I'm going to rotate it with Control J. Come up here and make sure it matches. It does. There. Looking good. Last but not least, I need a little circle to, oops, you know what, that one, press Y. I thought I had it all the way over, apparently I don't. Remember, if you're not getting it to snap on, go to quarter motion instead of half motion. Now, last but not least, I'm going to put a circle here. And control I, and then I'm going to change my Y size to 1, my, and say OK. Move this over. There's my symbol. Actually, I don't like that symbol, so I'm going to change it a little. I'm going to press here, press Y, over here. I'm going to make it a little shorter. Um, press Y, Y. Oops. There, press Y. Come in here, move this down a little, move this over. Eh, I'd probably make this even a little shorter, but that's good enough for this tutorial. Now, I want to go back and just look at the uh, schematic one more time. And there's my symbol. I can right-click, pull that out, and I can 
uh, go here and hit Control T for putting a uh, inversion on there, and that was uh, where was the uh, cell? Forget where the Control T for toggle the uh, node. Properties, arc, modes. That's the problem with using, whoops, there it was. Nope. Problem with using, uh, yeah, there it is, technology toggle port. Toggle port negation control T. Anyway. All right, so that looks pretty reasonable. So if I draw my transistor-based schematic in there, no one's going to say, hey, that looks funny. All right. So we, whoops. Pull all these down. And whoops, we need to go up a little bit. Move this over here. Now here's where I need to make sure that I'm, whoops. How did I that A get down there? Oh, because so I selected that. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, move that over there. And then let's move this up here. Now if I zoom in on this, notice that the uh, port or the pin is right here. So I can try to toggle that, but when I make my connection, then I have to connect to this side. So if I were to simply drag this down, I can't draw my wire to this side because there's no port there. I have to draw it over here. So what I could do instead is I could select that, hit delete, and then I have to connect to the output of this. Similarly, I could do a similar thing here, but I'll just, instead of doing that, just move these over. Okay, so let's hit Fill, do an F5, no errors, and there's my connection to this output pin here. Again, I might want to draw this out just to, just to make sure that there is some little bit of connection there. All right, so hit F5 again, go back, or let's save, go back to uh, control U, back up to the cell. There's my icon, move it over. Now before we quit, let's do a simulation using this cell. Let's see, well, why don't we, uh, oh, there's lots of things we could do. Let's call this uh, control N for news, and we'll call it uh, NAND sim and it's a schematic then let's instead of dragging the cell which we've been doing I noticed I could drag the cell over here the NAND like that you can view it whoops wrong one I want to drag the icon over I could view that but I'm not going to do that way instead I'm going to go up here to cell place new cell instance uh, schematic and NAND2 oh yeah I really do want to place the icon yes so I put it in there and we'll just put it there uh, let's make this a real quick sim so I'm just gonna see it wants me to connect over here again instead of vice versa and I don't like that this one I can connect and drag out here I can connect and drag out and I can and let's get rid of that extra pin shift so I delete that pin I'm gonna go ahead and modify this because I don't want to connect to that pin but let before I do that let me uh, just call this a this node I'm double clicking on those B and then here I'm gonna push down in and modify this symbol control D and push down in here, control D. Then I'm going to uh, select that arc, delete, 
and then I will uh, put a pin components schematic. I'll put a pin right here. Drag that over to there. Left click. And let's slide it over. And then uh, export that. Control E, and I think I called A NAND B. Okay, Control U, Control U. Now I can select there and pull that over. And I'll double click on that and call this A NAND B. Or actually, why don't I, eh, we can call it out or whatever we want. And why don't we move these so it's a little nicer looking. So this is node A, node B, node C. All right, so let's simulate the operation here. Why don't we just uh, add a load to A NAND B? So I'll go put some spice code in. And we'll drop it there. Control I, multi line, and let's put a capacitive load. Or before we do anything, let's do dot include C colon backslash electric backslash C5 underscore models dot txt. Let's uh, tie the B input to uh, VDD so that the NAND gate behaves like an inverter. Call this VB from B to GND of uh, DC5. Actually, we need to put our power supply in VDD, VDD0, DC5, V, GND, GND0, DC0. And then let's put a pulse from VA. A to GND, DC, 0, pulse, which will swing from 0 to 5, 1 nanosecond delay, um, 100 picosecond rise, 100 picosecond fall, uh, pulse width of 10 nanoseconds, and a period of 20 nanoseconds. Then we'll do a dot tran with 100 picosecond step size, or let's make that a little smaller, 10 picoseconds for 50 nanoseconds. So I've got my A input at uh, a pulse. My B input, my B input is at VDD, so it'll just behave like an inverter. So when A goes high, the output will go low. Let's do one other thing. Let's put a capacitive load on there, just to show C load from uh, A and B to ground of 100 femtofarads. Right, let's live it up and go 300 femto just to be different. If I hit this, it doesn't make the change. So I'm going to hit apply or OK. Save everything. Now, so I've got a capacitive load on there that I've specified with this net, with this text. So I'm going to press S. Uh, let's call this nansim underscore schematic. Save. Go back. And double click on that. Let's just look at A and B, A and B to begin with. OK. And let's go ahead and get rid of uh, uh, the red or B because it's staying high all the time. And then we've got our nice little RC times. And of course, if we were to go into the net list, and modify our code, let's say change it to 10 femto and rerun, you see much faster rise times or 1000 pico or 1 pico and run and you see much slower rise times. Alright, so let's stop there and when we come back we'll lay this out and do the same exact sim.